I'm Jeremiah Johnston. It's another great night here at Christian Thinker Society. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm speaking with Dr. Robert Stewart, who is the professor of philosophy and theology at New Orleans Seminary. This term, new atheism, scares some Christians, and they don't know what it is. Is this a different form of atheism from traditional atheism? Um, how do we respond to it? Does it have different rhetoric? Um, what is the distinction? Can you just distill down for our audience what is new atheism? Is it a fad? Is it going away? Is the throttle being turned up? What is it? Okay. Well, I think uh, it's many of those things. Um, most of your audience probably has heard of the new atheist or read the new atheist. Uh, the four horsemen of the new atheist is, uh, as Gary North uh, described them in his uh, Wired Magazine article from which we get the, the term uh, new atheist uh, are Richard Dawkins, Daniel Dennett, Sam Harris, and Christopher Hitchens. But along with them there would be other people like Victor Stinger, uh, like Michel Onfray in uh, France, uh, and, and a host of others. Uh, the difference would be uh, tone, for one, uh, that uh, the new atheists are in your face, uh, that they are calling uh, fence sitters uh, to come over to atheism, say, to come out of the closet, not simply to be uh, non religious. Uh, but to take up atheism as an all-embracing uh, worldview and to see uh, the propagation of atheism as a good thing for the world, which points to uh, another facet of the new atheism, is insisting that religion is dangerous, that, uh, that religion damages uh, people. We see this with uh, uh, the subtitle of uh, Christopher Hitchens' book, uh, uh, God is not good. The subtitle is uh, Why Religion or How Religion Poisons Everything It Touches. And, uh, and so this is, this is a theme as well. And then thirdly, the new atheists are materialist. Uh, atheists are not necessarily materialist. Many atheists would believe, say, in minds. Um, and uh, many atheists have believed in, in the immaterial mind, in the personal self. Uh, but a materialist atheist like Richard Dawkins uh, or Sam Harris would, would deny that, um, that there is anything uh, beyond the material world, uh, that all these uh, things that we think of like us, like ourselves, our consciousness and so forth, are really just uh, brute material processes. So. And so uh, uh, out of this, then there's the idea that Darwinism requires atheism. And this is new. Um, uh, many unbelievers, uh, say like the, the late Stephen Jay Gould, have said you can be a, you can be a Darwinian and be a, be a Christian or, or any other type of religious person, that, that the two don't overlap, um, and his idea of a non-overlapping magisterial authority. And, uh, but the new atheists uh, are almost universally materialist, and uh, for that reason, almost universally say, if you're a good scientist, you're a Darwinist, thus if you're a, and Darwinism leads to atheism, thus if you're a good scientist, you're an atheist. Is it accurate to say, Professor Stewart, that the new atheists are not very popular with some of the, their own traditional atheists in their own camp in some regards, that they present some of their highest, some of their worst critics are traditional atheists? Uh, yeah, I think I think that is certainly true. Um, most of the new eight, the three three of the four that we mentioned are not philosophers by training. Uh, Dawkins, Hitchens, and uh, Harris. And it's interesting that of the four, Dan Dennett, who is the lone philosopher, and Dennett is is a very highly respected philosopher. I mean, he's been the president of the, the APA, the American Philosophical Association, which is, is quite significant. And he's done some very sophisticated work in philosophy of mind and cognition and so forth, um, and philosophy of science. Uh, Dennett is the one who says he's not convinced that religion does more harm than good. He recognizes that religion does some good. And I think what you will find is that Atheists who are professional philosophers, and there are many of them, uh, are much uh, 
much less out in the open, much less uh, a brazen, a, um, uh, a much less caustic in their comments, uh, and um, much more careful and, and refined in what they say. For instance, Michael Roos, who is a highly respected philosopher of science at Florida State University, uh, when Alistair McGrath published his response to Richard Dawkins' God Delusion, McGrath titled it The Dawkins Delusion, uh, Ruse, who is an atheist, uh, uh, said, uh, wrote a blurb on the back cover saying, The God Delusion makes me embarrassed to be an atheist, and uh, the McGraths show why. So yes, they do come under fire from, from some of their own uh, for their tone and, uh, and their approach. I want to ask you a question now, and just I want to ask you to speculate for a minute. I mean, you're giving these fabulous answers. You're publishing these incredible books. We saw after 9/11 these this rise of anti-God books. We saw after 9/11 all these bestsellers against God. I mean, in your opinion, Professor Stewart, I mean, the the, the Christian layman is sitting right now listening to you, and they're shocked by these answers. You know, this is a world that many of the folks in our churches never see, but yet it's out there. Are we as Christians, are we winning the battle? Where are we at in the fight? Are we, are we waking up? I mean, are people responding to these things? I mean, we need a thousand men like you, and praise God for what you're doing. I mean, where are we at in the battle right now? Well, that's, that's a good question, and uh, I, I think a ba the battle... The, the analogy or the metaphor of battle is, um, is a good one. Uh, I, I'd say maybe a bit too tightly focused. Um, I'd say we're in a war, a war of worldviews. And there are lots of battles in wars. And so uh, we're losing some battles and we're winning some battles. Sometimes people ask me, is atheism growing uh, or is belief in God growing? Well, the answer is yes and no. Uh, there have been, there are more atheists today than there probably have ever been. And they are a smaller percentage of the world's population than they've ever been, probably, um, at least in the last, uh, since, since the Enlightenment. Atheism is not the only uh, adversary to Christian faith that is out there. There is Islam. Uh, there is uh, New Age or generic spirituality. Uh, there are other religions and so forth. Um, so uh, we live not only in a world that is becoming increasingly secular, uh, at least in the North and the West, but also uh, we live in a world that's pluralistic. But it frankly is a world that's a lot like the first century uh, when Christianity was birthed. And I think it's an exciting time uh, to be alive. And I expect that... Uh, that we're going to uh, continue to win the, the battles that we're winning and the few that we are losing, I think we're uh, beginning to gain ground in those areas as well. I hope you have just a few more minutes. I'm speaking with Dr. Robert Stewart, uh, professor of theology and philosophy at New Orleans Seminary. I, I just want to ask you a few more practical questions for our audience. What are some practical strategies that you encourage, that you've taught, that you've seen in your own life, for discussing faith with atheists and agnostics, practical things we can take home with us tonight? Well, I think the best thing to do with anybody is ask questions. Uh, people respond much better to a question than to an assertion. And uh, questions require something of the person to whom you're speaking. Uh, so, uh, a question makes them the expert. A question demands a response. Questions linger on with people afterward. A question that I find tremendously useful in my profession is, what do you mean? You know, philosophers are always saying things like, what does it mean to say that? Uh, well, that, that's a fundamentally important question. What do you mean? Why do you believe that? How do you know this? And uh, so oftentimes, if we just ask them for evidence, for reason, um, that puts the, the ball back in their court. And I think that's a good step to take. And of course, we always need to bathe what we do in prayer. And, uh, and we need to use God's Word, the Bible, 
Um, just because they don't believe it doesn't mean that it's not true. It doesn't mean that faith uh, comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We need to set it up appropriately. Uh, we need to use it wisely. Uh, but it is the only uh, tool that we have that will create faith in the heart of an unbeliever. Professor Stewart, I want to ask a question on behalf of either a new believer or perhaps someone that's been sitting on the fence and for the last several sessions here at Christian Thinker Society, they finally decided to get activated in apologetics. It can be a scary thing. I mean, people come to church, they have enough problems as it is, uh, they don't even want to know this side of the world exists. They see these God delusion type books at the bookstore and they walk quickly by them. Um, let's, let's pretend that you're teaching a Sunday school class right now and you're just Bob, um, your brother Bob, and you're getting ready to tell some uh, Christians that it's okay to investigate these things. You're not going to lose your faith. Get, get some of my audience over the fear that there is that if I began to dabble in some of these issues, I myself may lose my faith. And maybe the converse is true. Really, they'll be strengthened or undergirded. Can you just talk about that? Do you know where we're coming from? I'm, I'm asking this because it's been texted. Um, how would you respond to that? I think that's an excellent question. And uh, I, I don't know that that's an entirely unreasonable fear. Um, I, I make my students read stuff I disagree with every semester, um, but they are my students. And so probably one thing that we need to do more than, than we typically do is work as communities. So that um, one of the things that, that I will frequently uh, stress is study with somebody who knows. What I will typically say to an atheist is if you want to understand Christianity better so that you can refute it more effectively, come study with me. And, uh, uh, but I, I would say uh, that new believers uh, should be working with experienced believers. Um, uh, untrained thinkers should be working with trained thinkers. Um, but we do want to, to read these things. And as we read them appropriately, we can be strengthened in our faith. And what I have found is that apologetics not only is useful for evangelism, but it's a useful for theology. What happens in understanding theology because we study apologetics is like what happens when we study a foreign language. Uh, when, I, when I went to seminary, uh, I, I knew English almost fluently. I was an American. And uh, and, and I had spent several years in Germany, so I knew a little bit of German, but I didn't really study German scholastically. So I began to study Greek without really having a good grasp of grammar. And it, it was amazing how much better I understood English after a year of Greek. In the same way, it's amazing how much better a Christian will understand his own theology after he examines it with a mind to responding to criticisms of the Christian faith. So it really does make us stronger. That's a great answer. Thank you so much, Dr. Stewart. And I want to encourage all those of you listening from the New Orleans area to go take a class or audit a class if you don't want to take it for credit uh, from Dr. Robert Stewart at New Orleans Seminary. Final question tonight for you, Dr. Stewart. Um, why is Christian apologetics needed today? You know, we live in a day and age where I think one of our weakest links is in the most, in the more fashionable churches, this kind of conversation we're having, you probably wouldn't hear of, um, in the more fashionable type pulpits, a lot of them, not all of them, but many of them. Um, why is Christian apologetics needed today now more than ever, in your opinion? Fantastic. Uh, well, number one, it's always needed. Uh, because it goes hand in glove with evangelism, it goes hand in glove uh, with understanding our own faith, it goes hand in glove with loving God with your mind. So uh, Christian apologetics is important in, uh, in, be in obeying the two greatest commandments, to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. But particularly in a contextual answer, we live in a post-Christian world. This is a world uh, that may be haunted by Jesus, as my friend Ben Witherington likes to say, 
but it's also biblically illiterate. And, uh, and so we, we don't uh, understand, uh, we as a, as a general culture don't understand who Jesus is. We have all kinds of false ideas about Jesus. We have all kinds of false ideas about Christians, about the church. And, uh, and so we need to study apologetics for this reason, uh, to help us understand better and to help them understand better. But it's an exciting time uh, to be a Christian today because we've got so many challenges. Obviously, it's more difficult than it probably was 80 or 100 years ago uh, to do the job of a pastor, to do the job of a missionary. Uh, but um, it's important for us. It's important for those who are not believers that we do this. And uh, it's important for us to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Well, Dr. Stewart, it's been an honor to have you tonight at Christian Thinker Society. I thank you for your support of what we're trying to do here. And we're going to pray for you, and we appreciate your prayers for us. It's been an honor to speak with you. If you want to know more about Christianity, if you want to watch this interview again, you can watch it on my blog at jeremiahjjohnston.com. Just Google Christian Thinker Society, all those of you who are watching, or come join us on a Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. You let your voice be heard. You can text me a question. We'll answer it. We're going to wrap about these topics and others. Dr. Stewart, thank you so much. Uh, Godspeed to you with all that you're doing in your ministry and your teaching, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. God bless you. God bless you.